What is up y'all? Welcome back. So when it comes to kind of decluttering my space, managing all the things that I'm interacting with, a lot of times things fall into piles. And lately I have had a growing pile of products that I would consider luxury regrets. Things that I spent a lot of money on, either for myself or for my channel, and the word regret is always used a little bit loosely on my channel because it's always news you can use. I always think that regardless of how I feel about a product, I'd rather have an opinion than not know. So there's always value to it in that respect, but it is also a really lovely part of my job that I get to tell y'all before, hopefully, you spend the money on these things. And maybe, maybe, sometimes, the reasons that I didn't like something are all the reasons that you might love them. So this is all very personal, but in some cases, I'm also going to offer you the alternative products that I think are better buys than these things that I regret spending my money on. So I have a whole bag of them over here. Let's go ahead and jump in. She said pink today. She said pink. I have been loving some of the makeup that I've been trying lately, and I got to try the new CL blushes for this. I mean, there's plenty of other stuff on my face, but the new CL blushes are right here. June and January. They're so good. They're so beautiful. And it really led me down this pink avenue. And I also, this combo, I went with the Danessa Myricks Moisture Repair Balm Serum first, and then the new Dior Forever Glow Star Filter, and then the Prada Foundation. Game over. So here we have it. I don't think there's any Make Beauty in here. <laughs> but this is a Make Beauty bag. Do not be misled. There are some things in here that are going to be familiar to y'all and some things that probably are gonna be surprising. So let's just begin at the beginning here. This is what spurred the video. I tried this one more time today and I was like, this is such a farce. So this is, and I know Tom is going to be mad at me, but this is the Dr. Dennis Gross Plump and Repair Lip Treatment. Here's the thing with this. This is not new technology. Everything about this is presented as if it's going to be something revolutionary and that it's going to be a companion to, hear me out, this. So when this came out, this is the Dennis Gross Lip LED Mask, they were kind of sold as an idea together, which of course is brilliant from a marketing standpoint, but this is a fantastic product. This lip mask is great. I'm really, really glad that I got it. It just helps with everything. I don't know. It's just like really, really good for your lips altogether. But this is a low tech item that just has a spicy plumper to it. And frankly, I just want to caution anyone against this because all this does is give you clown lips. And that doesn't mean that if you bought this, you're a clown. I will put in a picture of my lips when I put this on and I look like I have clown lips because it just turns your lips red like a clown. Like there's nothing new revolutionary worth the high price point of this that sets it apart from anything else of this ilk in the industry. And it is a very, very unspecial formula. It does the exact same thing as any other kind of inflammatory <laughs> lip plumper. And those are a type of product that I truly despise because it doesn't matter what you put on top of it, what color it is, whatever. If the formula irritates the crap out of your lips, you just end up with big, swollen, irritated red lips. And as you can see, I like a plump, glossy, neutral lip. I just don't want my lips red. Okay. While we're at it, let's touch on these. These were like 40 something dollars a piece and the packaging is beautiful. Even though it's kind of giving Charlotte Tilbury, it's not quite giving like luxury luxury, but like I wish that they had put this cap on the Gucci concealer. I think that that would have been a game changer for the luxurious experience of interacting with that component because the little flowery lid just, I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. Either way, these are the Gucci lip glosses that they just came out with and they do the exact same thing as the Dr. Dennis Gross lip plumper. They just turn your lips red. And so I bought two shades thinking, wow, that's a really beautiful nuanced kind of mauvey brown. And wow, that's a really beautiful translucent, I mean, they call it coral, but it's a translucent kind of tangerine color. Nope, they're all the same color because they all just plump the crap out of your lips and they make them really red and it's painful. And if you get them outside of your lips, it's gonna turn that red too. So you have to be super careful putting on a lip gloss and then it's not even the color that you paid for. This is a formulation that has no right to be this expensive because it's incredibly low tech. All right, this might be a surprise. I bought this myself. Hear me out, hear me out, okay? This is Replica Lazy Sunday Morning. Replica does occasionally send me gifting and it is the most 
beautiful gifting in the world. I have received home diffusers. One was in Lazy Sunday Morning and the other one is, and I haven't opened it yet, I'm like saving it, is in By the Fireplace. They sent me a By the Fireplace candle, a perfume, a mini perfume, a travel perfume. They sent me a candle and a full-size perfume of From the Garden. And here is my hot take on all the replica fragrances that I have experienced so far. They make unbelievably lovely home and environment fragrances. Now I haven't smelled all of them on me, obviously, like I don't own all of them. I have received a lot of gifting. I did buy this one myself though at the Sephora sale because I liked the Lazy Sunday Morning Diffuser so much. It just gives, I think I said it beats you over the head with luxurious relaxation. It's like you are forced to be in a good mood when you smell it. It's just so good and it's so strong and it just completely permeates the space. It's worth every penny. I cannot recommend their candles and home like room diffusers highly enough. They truly give the luxury experience that you're paying for. I just think that their scents translate best to environment fragrances, not to personal fragrances. Now, I know a lot of people love Jazz Club, I, people love Beach Walk, people, you know what I mean? There are things that I have not tried on my skin, but on the ones that I have tried on my skin, the ones that I just mentioned, they are better candles, better room fragrances. And in the case of From the Garden and By the Fireplace, those are ones that I will actually wear, but I do think they make better room fragrances. But in the case of Lazy Sunday Morning, the perfume doesn't smell like the room diffuser. And that was why I was annoyed because I bought this being like, look, I love this kind of, it's like a really unique take on a soapy smell. And it's not something that I typically go for, but like, there's just something about it that just does not translate. This is not as complex and lovely as the room fragrance version of it. Whereas I do feel like By the Fireplace and From the Garden are both like dead ringers for the home fragrance scent. <laughs> this just smells different than the room diffuser. And also I think that at least the scents that I have had so far are better home fragrances than they are personal fragrances. Like it's not bad, it's just not the same. All right, next. I looked back on my luxury regrets videos from the past and I wanted to make sure that I hadn't mentioned this before, but as I was going through my eyeshadow palettes, the only one that I hadn't mentioned before that I truly am like, God, why did I buy that? is this. And I don't know if people really consider Natasha Denona luxury anymore, but her palettes, like her large palettes are really expensive. This is one of the kind of medium ones and it was still like $70 or something. This is the My Dream palette. And here, here's the thing. This is why this is actually a regret is because I know I don't like her formula. <laughs> Why did I buy it? I guess I just wanted to review it and see if it changed my mind because these are beautiful colors. They really are. I love the color story here. And I knew that going into it, like this would be a color story that I would want to wear. I mean, look at it. It just goes with my complexion, but I just don't like working with her formulas. They're too sticky. They're too stiff. And that's just a personal preference thing. There are formulas on the other side of the spectrum that are like too fluffy and don't have enough stick to them. Like the old ABH formula or melt cosmetics eyeshadow formula. Those are ones that I just find don't really have a lot of wear time because they are kind of like they blend away. These are the opposite. They're so grippy that they just frustrate me. And so I regret buying this. It makes me sad too, because like some of these shades are just bananas. Like they're so good. I, what I should do actually is because the only ones that I don't like are her mattes. I should really depot because it's very easy. Like she makes it very easy to pop the shades out and pull out these shimmers because they're glorious. I think that's what I'm going to do. And we'll call this not a regret, but just like a khaki, what were you thinking kind of moment. <laughs> now this is a regret, okay? And I, let me place this in context because I have been loving most things from the Prada Beauty release. Like I adore this. I wear this every chance I get. I will be buying backups of it when I finish it. This is my favorite foundation that I have ever used, full stop. And I like the eyeshadow palettes, even though they're a little weird. I like the lip lipstick formula, even though it's like not particularly my thing to wear a matte lipstick formula and they are heavily fragranced, but like still I'm a believer, you know, and it's a incredibly long wearing formula and some very interesting colors. If you are a matte lip kind of person, this 
is an error, okay? And I haven't returned it yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to. I kind of like to keep things around that I hated just to remind myself. Otherwise I will go back and like try them again, which is incredibly stupid. But it's like, I need to be able to remind myself all the nuanced reasons that I didn't like something. So this is the Prada lip balm. It's pretty hard to screw up a lip balm, but they managed. Yes, they did. There are two big problems here. One, yeah, I mean, this is on me. By the way, I don't know what's happening. Like someone's like excavating outside. I don't know. I don't have control of that, but hopefully it's not picking up too much on my microphone. If it is, ambiance. This is incredibly fragranced. So are the lipsticks, but there's something about a lipstick being fragranced that I can get over. Whereas like a lip balm being fragranced, so perfumey, you know, it's like a, there's a lip balm that's kind of got like a vanilla scent, anything that's just kind of food-ish. Fine, whatever, I'll move past it. You know, watermelon, okay, flowers. The other big issue here, and the one that I take the largest amount of issue with is the fact that this is just not a good lip balm. <laughs> it's matte, it's not nourishing, it's a little bit green. You'd think that it would be low enough pigment that that's just a vibe you know, of the bullet, like they just wanted it to look like something because the inside of all the lids is also that lovely mint green. And I do really think that that's a cool touch. But the fact that this is pigmented enough that I don't know, someone was like, is it kind of a color character? I guess, but like, it's so matte and it's so weird and milky looking like it's just a bad lip balm. I mean, there are so many other, like, you know, as, as far as recommending alternatives, I love the Gucci one that I paid too much money for. I love a YSL candy glaze. I love anything. I love anything. I love anything clear. It's really hard to piss me off with their lip gloss or a lip balm, but they managed. Yes, they did. And that was like 50 bucks. Yeah. So I haven't even really like done a dedicated review on this. I just used it a little bit on camera for y'all and the shade match isn't perfect perfect, but it definitely works well enough. This is the new Louboutin fetish fluid. And I got this in 15 NW and it's just a little bit olive toned for me, but like, this is nothing to write home about. This is just a nothing burger kind of formula. It's not really committed one way or the other. And like, I will say, the way that Prada put out a foundation that somehow isn't committed one way or the other, but that means that it works on everyone. This is not really committed one way or the other. And for whatever reason, that just means that it doesn't really work in any memorable way. It's a little too matte. It's a little bit too pasty looking, a little bit too cakey looking. It doesn't really do anything glorifying for my skin. It's not it's skin improving. I've used it several times with several different skin prep steps and I'm gonna continue trying it, but like in the wide world of beautiful foundations, especially because I can almost wholesale recommend the entire Chanel foundation line, if you can find a shade in it, or I can recommend Prada Reveal to just about anybody. It's really easy to look at something like this and go, I am whelmed and that's not good enough. Now we know, and it's a shame because this component is gorgeous. The, the lid being plastic is kind of lame, although it's red on the inside, which is cool, but this is, glass and heavy and wonderful. And I just want to love this so much. I really wanted to, I mean, always when I buy something, I want to be able to report back to you that it is incredible and worth every penny. But Louboutin just really didn't, they just really didn't do the thing for me on this one. Maybe it is incredible for some people, some skin types, but a comment that I got recently from someone was just fantastic that they were talking about this, the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow. I think they said something to the effect, if I can find it, I'll put it on the screen, something to the effect of there is makeup that wants to be on your skin and that makeup forever looks like it doesn't want to be on your skin. <laughs> It's like that meme that says like cranberry juice doesn't want to be wet. <laughs> like this didn't want to be on my skin. I feel like this doesn't want to be on my skin either. There are a lot of products like that. This is definitely like the biggest example of it though. I don't like this one at all, but I don't consider this to be a luxury product. But the Prada, like it wants to be on your skin. There's something about it where you put it on and it just goes, ah. And when something like this exists, why are we screwing around with something like this? You know, this is, <sighs> This is not a regret because I didn't buy this. Everything else in here I have bought. This is something that I just feel like everyone needs to be made aware of. YSL sends me a lot of PR and it's something I'm so grateful for because I love so many of their products. The problem here, this is the All Hours Precise Angles Concealer. They sent me the All Hours Foundation and the All Hours Concealer in the same shade. And this is just something to be aware of. Best opportunity I've found to tell you all this. This is darker than its respective shade in the foundation. And that seems to be the issue all the way across the shade range. So a few of my friends who are also on the PR list also received both the foundation and the concealer. I will actually show you. Ooh, 
The fragrance is nice. Something that I point out a lot is that if there is a light neutral one, I'm gonna be light neutral one. I'm just kind of like example of light neutral one in any range. But can you see that? There we go. <laughs> this is the foundation and this is the concealer. And I know that that's nuanced, but not only is it a little bit darker and a little bit more orange, but also it's matte. The concealer is matte and the foundation does go to a soft matte, but nowhere near as dry as that concealer does. And as they dry down, look, look, like that's a skin tone match for me. And that is just not, and that is the issue across the board. So is this a big fail? No, but I want you to be aware of it in case you are interested in this line. Make sure that you don't pick the same concealer that you do the foundation. Make sure that you go lighter on the concealer because this is an anomaly. This is just not something that lines typically do. Like Givenchy, I have N95 in the foundation and the concealer and they work great. So you'd always think that the concealer is gonna be either an exact match to the foundation or slightly lighter and it's just not the case with that one, so. Be aware. I wanna talk about these two at the same time because they're very much the same issue, kind of the same way I talked about the Dr. Dennis Gross and the Gucci right up next to each other. Yeah, these are two purchases that I've made very recently with the same kind of hopes in mind. So this is the Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer and then the Dior Forever Glow Maximizer. It might be a case of just, I'm not into this kind of product, but like I love a tinted highlighter, I do. And I love when something behaves enough like a tint, you know, that I can kind of use it in tandem with my blush. Right now I'm wearing the Givenchy she highlighter, the liquid highlighter, this one right here, and I love it. Now, you know, are these as fair as that? No, but like, I was prepared for that. I did have in mind that they were going to be blushier. The problem with these is that they just don't do what they say that they do. Now, someone did argue with me, <laughs> I don't mean that aggressively, but in my comments, they were like, well, you know, the directions for the Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer are that you like either put it all over your face first, which who would do that with this? I don't care what your skin tone is, don't do that with this. But, or you would mix it with your foundation. What would that do, Armani? Let's find out. It just looks like a color corrector. I don't know. And like. I didn't use much of the foundation. The issue with the Armani is that it doesn't have enough pigment to it to be committed one way or the other about anything. So it's beautiful, like look how beautiful that is. I compared it expectation wise to the Surratt little blushes that are very sheer, but they're so utterly beautiful. And like, look at that up close. It has these beautiful little gold flecks in it. You just think that it's going to be a really versatile sheer product. But when it goes on, it just kind of is neither here nor there. I don't know. Like there's just something about it that's too serum-y with not enough pigment to it that once it gets on the skin, it doesn't show up and then it just moves your makeup around. So I would skip that one. And then this one, the Dior Forever Glow Maximizer, it just feels like an afterthought compared to the star filter that they put out. It's fine, but the star filter, I'm wearing it right now, is so effective. And this is just, again, like, I don't know, it just doesn't really do enough for me to be like, yes, that's a separate product that's worth purchasing. For whatever reason, like once you get it on the skin, it's just not really there. Whereas, you know, you would think that something like this would be exactly the same, but there's something about this Givenchy that when it goes on, the shimmer is just so, what is the word? Look at how refractive it is. Look at how much it catches the light, whereas this is almost kind of like the Kosas Glow IV in the way that when it dries down, the actual texture of the dry down is matte, even though the particles in there are reflective, it's still matte. Whereas this, even though it does dry down all the way, it still keeps this beautiful luminosity to it. And both of these kind of dry down to nothing. They're just kind of flat, even though they're glittery. There you go. And finally, I know that these didn't come out this year, but I haven't mentioned them in a larger regrets yet. And if you're new to the channel, maybe you haven't seen these and maybe you've been eyeing them, so to speak. These are the Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Long Wear Fluid Eyeshadow. They've got a lot of nerve calling these long wear. Why? Because they're water-based. Riddle me that, okay? Oh, they are beautiful. Now, I will say when you blend them out, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little wound. It's fine. Like they're, they're fine. I don't find them to be something that would replace a single eyeshadow in its effect from Pat McGrath. In any case, I would far rather have a Pat McGrath powder eyeshadow than either of these. They're just not that versatile. They're not that flattering. The colors aren't that dialed in, but here's, here's the issue, right? 
get them all the way dried down. We'll just, we'll just wait it out. We are more or less dried down. Like yes, the powder will move, but that's dried down as much as it's going to dry down. Shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do that with my spit. Come on. And Surratt put out those souffle eyeshadows and they say they're water-based, but let me tell you what, they don't do that. That is not long wearing, okay? If it is water soluble, you can't call it long wearing. Why are you gonna put a formula out that's for your eyes that's water soluble like that easily? So easily. Like there are obviously mascara is water soluble. Most normal mascara, like regular wash off mascaras are water soluble. But A, I don't wear those formulas anyway. I wear tubing mascara formulas. But B, there's still gotta be some kind of technology to a mascara that doesn't make it just turn back into liquid immediately. Like these want to turn back into watercolor immediately as soon as something that is wet touches them and for that reason it's like don't spend your money that is a booby trap that is a practical joke to tell you that that is a long wearing liquid eyeshadow and you put it on your eyes and then over the course of the day it's just like i cannot imagine them being long wearing as far as the alternatives to those i mean there are tons of beautiful shadows out there but there are two Ritual Defee eyeshadows that match these perfectly. Let me grab them. I have one in the old packaging and one in the new packaging. The old packaging is so tiny that like you can't get a finger in there, but either way, this is Exuvier. I'll put my fingernail in there to get a swatch. And I don't really use these because they're so annoying to get into. Even the new packaging, I'm sorry. I know they put so much work into it, but like it's still hard for me to get my finger in there with like my nails and everything. But yes, that is Exuvier. I will actually swatch the Pat McGrath ones in a second. And this is Mineralia. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful formulas. Okay. These are the two Pat McGrath shades. And those are the two shades from Ritual Defeat. Obviously, I didn't build the Ritual Defeat up enough to have like a metallic finish, but you can, and you can also put glitter on top of any of them or whatever. You know, these are going to be more metallic, more shimmery than these, but the colors are dead ringers. And this is going to be a formula that wears. And regardless of how pretty these are, they don't, so there's no point in comparing. So there you have it, friends. Hopefully this saved you some money and let you take some stuff out of your cart that you might've been thinking about. I love those comments when people are like, this has been sitting in my cart and I've been agonizing about it for God knows how long and you finally resolved it for me. I just hope that it helps you sleep better at night. It's all just an effort to make sure that y'all like what you buy. <laughs> That's the most important thing to me. And I hope y'all appreciated this. So if you did, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here. Hi, I'm Khaki. This is what we do. We compare products. I love doing roundups. I love doing brand reviews. I love doing all kinds of comparisons with my very large encyclopedic collection so that y'all can make the best decisions with your next beauty budget dollar or euro or shekel. Drachma. Drachma doesn't exist anymore. Your francs. Your deutschmarks. Your pesos. Pesos are real. Pesos still exist. <laughs> your pounds. All right, I need to get off camera, but yeah, if those things appeal to you, then consider subscribing while you're here, and I will put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one. Thank y'all so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!